Hello. How are you doing today, Eva? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. Very excited to talk with you because you understand the vision and the performance of art in the way that, you know, ballet, you're singing on NBC's The Voice. You don't let walls stand in front of you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you saying that. So how do you let it free? How do you set it free? How do you, you know, envision it and then all of a sudden people are able to experience it? You know, I think for me, the biggest thing is just that I'm experiencing all these emotions and these experiences and these feelings, and I need a way to express it myself. Um, and I do so in a way that hopefully can touch other people. Um, I'm a songwriter as well. And my biggest thing as a songwriter is just making people feel something, even if it's maybe hatred towards what I write, but hopefully not. <laughs> um, I think like since I was little, I've just needed ways to express myself and I really enjoyed touching other people through that. So it's almost like you get a backstage pass to your performance every day then. Yeah, I guess a little bit. <laughs> I mean, I mean, because that's what I love about, about being creative is the fact that it's like, oh, my God, I'm the one right here as it's happening. How did I get here? Yeah, no, exactly. It's, it's a really cool feeling, I think, kind of getting to look at it that way. Yeah, and then to take that feeling and then to basically kind of put it in a language where you, you begin to have followers and stuff. Because, I mean, it, it, there, there was, I had a, a book author the other day explain to me that his teachers while in elementary school said, just write. I don't care if you don't spell it right, just write. I mean, it's, <laughs> it, and performance is the same way. Just do it. Yeah, no, exactly. It's uh, It's been a dream come true getting to kind of, do this at a grander scale with the voice um but yeah it's just i mean this is what i've always wanted to do i i love songwriting i love singing and being able to kind of put it all into one big package and the the performance aspect is is just so cool being on the voice on nbc at the age of 22 right right away i'm reminded of of at 25 i was up to replace casey Kasem on american top 40 and i thought 25 oh, wow. I'm, I'm gonna make it i'm gonna make it i'm gonna make it now that i'm 60 i'm going wow i had so much more life beyond that do you ever think about that beyond 22 yeah i mean look at what's in front of you right now yeah i definitely do and i think that's kind of like a, a nice thing to think about i uh I think I've accomplished a lot more than I ever thought I would at 22. Um, and I think just knowing that I've done this much this soon means that I do it. Like, like you said, I have my whole life in front of me and I think it just makes me excited for what's to come because if I could get on the voice at 22, like who knows what I can do at, you know, 23, 24, 25 or 30 or 40. So I'm, I'm excited for what's to come and I'm definitely not stopping my singing or performing anytime soon. Well, and, and that's the artist in you. And, and, and to be able to be truthful to that artist in you, how do you reach that person? I'm, I'm a daily writer. Mornings, afternoons, I'm always writing. How do you reach your artist self? You know, I think sometimes it comes easier than others than other times. Um, I, I think sometimes I don't always want to be as honest with myself as I need to be in order to reach that true artistry. Sometimes I kind of run from that. But when I can really connect to how I'm feeling and, the vulnerability that I have in some situations, that's when I can really get it to come out. I think being an artist is sometimes scary because you're either standing up on stage in front of, you know, hundreds or thousands of people, or in this case, you know, you're getting shown on national TV, or, you know, you're writing songs that are basically pages right out of your diary. And I think sometimes that can be kind of a scary and daunting thought, but when I can kind of get past that and, and just really like connect to who I am and really like write about the things that I'm going through and kind of not be afraid of, of the reactions I'll get and do it more for me. I think that's when I really connect to it all. Who's more scary to you, that audience or yourself? Because I'm a daily writer. There, are, I, I can go back to any day all the way back to July of 1994 and go through all the, the experiences again. And, and many times I sit there and go, what? What? You really felt that? Yeah, no, it is definitely me. I am my worst critic. Um, and sometimes I'm like, girl, you need to be a little less harsh on yourself. I mean, even throughout uh, the whole experience with The Voice so far, I can I can think back and be like, oh, I know exactly how I was feeling leading up to the blinds, leading up to the battles. And a lot of that like negative self-talk can kind of come forward. And even if it's not like outright negative, it's definitely, I, I put a lot of pressure on myself. And I think, I think the pressure I put on myself is scarier than than an audience because you know an audience at the end of the day kind of wants you to succeed they want to see you do well most of the time but um sometimes the things you tell yourself in your head are like ah you're not good enough oh you're not doing this well enough you need to keep practicing and that's definitely the the bigger hurdle to overcome i think well look at the challenge that you had you sang a taylor swift song you you know yeah. her followers are going to go okay eva come on now <laughs> what are you going to do with this song 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And, and, and yet what I what I love about Taylor, I mean, she just dropped this brand new uh, collection of music this past weekend is the fact that yes. she is unstoppable. And and when you oh, I, I mean, and, and to me, that's what she, all artists should be doing right now. Don't let anything get in the way. Don't follow anybody's rules, but your own. No, exactly. I mean, she's so inspiring. I grew up listening to her as a, as a kid, um, went to her 1989 album, uh, tour and cried when she sang 15 because I was 15 at the time. And. I don't know, I think it's so cool because not only is she kind of changing the world of songwriters, I mean, she really is, has led the charge for artists getting paid more per streams and has, you know, talked so much about her owning her own masters and re-recording them if she can't. And I think that's so cool, but she also just inspired me to be a songwriter really early on because, you know, she was, she was like 15 writing these amazing songs and I was like, man, if she can do it, then I guess so can I. Have you ever seen that outtake a video of her on YouTube where she handles the people that interviewed her that got stories wrong and the way that she professionally handled them? I mean, she I, yes. it, it's, like, it's like she expected those bad questions because she had a reply. Yeah. Oh, I know. And she and she does it in such a way that's like still graceful, but firm. Oh, so cool. Yeah. Inspiration. So you have to fill those shoes. You you have to become Eva. You have to become that person that you're you're going to have thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of interviews in front of you. How do you handle yeah. yourself in these times where you don't know the next question I'm going to ask? <laughs> um, I think just deep deep breathing and uh, knowing that at the end of the day, I'm the only one who knows the answers to your questions. So hopefully in some way I'll be able to <laughs> pull the answer out. Right. <laughs> well, I've always wanted to interview the author that does these murder mysteries. I want to put them on the stand inside a courtroom. It's like, you know who oh, the murderer so is. You're the one. You're the one. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be something to see for sure. <laughs> so, so learning the guitar and being a vocalist, yes. my God, that's, that's the left and right side of your brain. How do you, how do you do that? <laughs> I don't know. I think I've had a lot of help. I mean, I took vocal lessons um, all throughout high school and um, in college as well. Um, and that really helped because when I first started out singing, I had a really low voice and I still do in some ways, but I couldn't really sing the higher parts like, that I really wanted to. Um, so that really helped. And um, I'm mostly self-taught on guitar, but I think at the end of the day, it's just that I want it really badly. I mean, I picked up a guitar and started singing and was like, oh yeah, this is what I'm meant to do. This is the most fun I've ever had. Um, and I, I don't get a rush like this from anything else. Um, so yeah, I mean, sometimes there are moments where I'm like, man, <laughs> well, have... guitar's kind of hard. My hands really hurt. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, having those lower vocal tones, I, I, I read an article one time where Miley Cyrus had a conversation with Stevie Nicks and Stevie embraced her lower, lower tones. I mean, I mean, you're, you're in that league. Not everybody can do that, but look at the two of them. Oh, I know. I, first of all, wow, thank you. It's so cool to be said in the same sentence as those um, idols. But also, yeah, I mean, I think it's really cool because I even growing up, you know, I did acapella, I did musical theater. Um, and I remember I auditioned for an acapella group coming into college and they were testing my range and they just kept going lower and lower and lower. And I heard from the corner of the room, one of the guys go, oh, my God, that's lower than my range. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, that's just such like a, a cool thing. I think, you know, a lot of people can sing really high and, and, and I still love singing in that range, but not as many women can sing low. So it's kind of cool. And I also think it's, it's a way for me to connect more emotionally to songs, too. I think sometimes those lower notes can be a little more powerful if I put more emotion into them. Well, those those lower tones remind me of the natural vibe, the, where where we really are. We don't have to go to a certain note in order to reach people. We can just be ourselves in these lower tones. Yeah, no, definitely, I I agree with that. Music theater, you have to understand the song <laughs> and the story before you can put it up there in the top row of the theater. And so, so I mean, you you are so far ahead of most people when it comes to performing music. Thank you. Yeah, I definitely think it's helped. I. Uh... It, it's nice being able to kind of put myself into whatever story the song is, is going through. Like even with the voice, I think being able to kind of like look at the lyrics of Taylor Swift and before that Maggie Rogers for my Vine audition and kind of kind of put myself in that storyline more. And I think musical theater would definitely help with that. <laughs> You know, one of the things that I love about this modern generation that we're living is that I believe that, that the younger generation, they do know a lot of things that, that the older people don't. And so if you could tell or share with Blake something that, that would improve something he's doing, what would it be? 
in, in terms of music or just well, in general? Well, I, I, I guess in general because, I mean, I, I love it when my, when my grandson or my granddaughter bring me something uh, on a computer and they show me a new trick. I mean, it, it's the, you guys are fearless. You're fearless. Whereas we're going, <laughs> I'm not doing that. You know, I become, become a curmudgeon of some sort. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's such a good question. I think Blake Shelton is, first of all, one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. Yep. Um, but you know, he always makes the jokes that he's like 80 years old on the on the air. But um, I feel like if Blake went on like TikTok or something and started like trying to do like country music trends, I think that would be just the coolest thing ever. <laughs> I think people would freak out seeing Blake Shelton doing a TikTok trend, and I think he could kind of put his own spin on it. I mean, he just released uh, "Nobody," his uh, new song, and I think if he if he made kind of a, a TikTok trend of that, people would go nuts. So I'd, I'd love to see Blake Shelton doing the, the TikTok trends. I think it'd be both a little bit humorous, just given who he is, but also a really cool moment for him and his fans. Oh, yeah, I'd like to see him do a pop song like like Gwen Stefani. I would love to see him get up oh. on that stage. Have you ever seen Gwen Stefani perform in concert? Yes. Oh, my God. Yes, oh she's God. incredible. And with the, when the two of them perform together, it's like magic, I swear. I think it'd be so cool to have him yeah, imagine, because I feel like she oftentimes does country music with him, but imagine if he did pop music with her. That'd be so cool. It's just one of those things where it, there's something about him that still hasn't come out. And it's and so with with him yeah. saying that this is his final season, I'm going, he's going to do something. He's he's not he's not walking oh, away yeah. from this to go sit at home. He's going, he's going to no. do something. I know. I'm excited to see it, honestly. I I think... I think we, I think we all want kind of a, a Blake Shelton reawakening. I think that'd be so cool. Well, and you're part of that ge- that that what, generation or that story. You're part of his final page on NBC's The Voice, and so I'm. My yeah. God, I mean, I hope you're writing this stuff down because someone's going to come to you one day, fifteen, twenty years from now, saying, "Okay, uh, uh, Eva, you were part of that." Yeah. Oh, I know, and I mean, it's such an honor too. I. I when Blake turned for me, it was maybe one of the best moments of my life so far. And I mean, he's been on the show the longest and I think he knows what he's looking for maybe the most. And just to be, you know, like you said, one of those final artists on his team is truly just so amazing. And I can't really explain how it makes me feel just because I, I just, I'm so honored and I never thought I'd be here. One, one of the things that I've learned about creativity is that a thought arrives to, to a creative person 10 seconds before we actually act upon that thought. When you go into that zone, how do you embrace, you know, trusting that thought to be your next step? Oh, that's also a good question. I mean, I think a lot of it's practice. You know, when I first started performing, I didn't really trust those thoughts and I'd kind of try and fight them. And now, I mean, when I walk on stage, it's almost like, I, I sometimes I don't even remember half the things that happen because I really just kind of let myself get into that groove and just trust myself enough to kind of like do whatever is going to happen. You know, like what happens happens. And I think, I think, yeah, I, I get into this, this amazing headspace where I'm nervous right before the song starts and then the song starts and it's like this sense of calm just washes over me and it's, I'm where I'm meant to be. I'm on stage. I'm doing what I love. And I think when that kind of situation happens and I'm in that zone, like nothing can touch me. And even, you know, I've had bad notes on stage before. I mean, it's still going to happen, but I think with enough practice and kind of trusting myself and knowing that when I go into that zone, I'm, I'm pretty unstoppable. I think, that kind of helps me stay focused. You you talk about being backstage and stuff like that, and right away I had a flashback of the Elvis movie where that where the curtains close and he looks to the right and you can see his exhaustion. I can't imagine <laughs> what it's like for you to be on that NBC's The Voice stage and when that song <laughs> is over and what you're going through mentally and physically when you're backstage. Oh, uh, it's it's a lot. I think especially because you know you you wait a lot. Um, it's kind of like a hurry up and wait, you know, you, you get to the stage, you, you know, get your makeup retouched, you practice with your partner, if you're doing it with them or practice on your own. And then you kind of just wait and wait and wait. And then finally it's your turn. You go on. It's like this big adrenaline rush. And, and in a, in a weird sense, you're kind of fighting for your life on stage sometimes on the voice. And then you have to like, wait and just like hope that your coach like sees what, in my case, he wants in you and, um, hope that you get picked and then, and then that like, like high kind of like, you're like, oh my God, oh my God, like I moved on, I moved on. And then you get back to the hotel and you're kind of sitting in your room and then you pass out for four hours because yep. of all the adrenaline, like 
just completely comes crashing down. Like I, I have a, a funny video that I sent to my mom after winning my battle of me dancing and um, how excited I was. And I remember specifically looking at the time of that video and five minutes later I was in bed asleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, because I mean, isn't it because it's, it is us, but it's not really us. There's something in control of what we're doing. We just know that we have to show up. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, I, I'm as authentic as I can be on stage. And I like to think that, you know, I'm, I'm myself, but it is a heightened version of myself. You know, I don't, I don't walk into my living room and I'm like, hello, everyone. Like, I'm, I'm not like that in my day to day life. And you have to be a lot more high energy and just a lot more focused. And you have to be on the entire time. You know, you can't just like, stop performing when you're on stage. You can't just like, you can't just go up there and sing the songs like as monotone as you can and don't move. You know, you have to, it's, it's a whole body experience. So it's, it's the coolest feeling ever, but it's definitely, you know, it's like a full workout at the end of the day. Do you see yourself as a tool? In other words, the universe is using you as a tool to reach people so they can have an escape. Hmm. I mean, maybe in some ways, but I, instead of a tool, I'd say maybe like a, like an outlet. I feel like yeah. tool kind of makes it seem like I have no control in it. And like, like I don't really like I'm being used, I guess, but I, I, I kind of, I kind of feel like it's more of a collaborative effort. You know, I, I chose to do this. I, I feel like this is what I was always meant to do. It's my life force in a lot of ways. And I think, yeah, I think uh, maybe I'm like an outlet between between myself and the universe and what needs to be said to others. It's like you're reading my notes because up here on the right-hand side of my notes, it says, what's the best part about having music as your outlet? And you, you totally <laughs> took me there. You totally took me there. <laughs> well, <laughs> look at me go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, having music as my outlet, it's just, it's such a special thing to be connected to, I think. And I'm really lucky. I mean, you mentioned I'm only 22. I have my whole life ahead of me. And to know what I'm meant to do at 22, I think is such a gift. I have a lot of friends and even family who don't know what they want to do and, and haven't found that purpose yet. Um, I just, I can't even explain it to you. And I mean, I, I know this is going to sound cheesy, but it's just like, I don't think I've ever loved anything more. <laughs> and I, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's so cool. Cause you know, a lot of people, kind of express themselves in in different forms whether it be through like fashion or makeup or you know social media or writing poems or whatever and, and in a way I get to kind of do it all yeah. I get to express myself as this performer who wears cute clothes and does like <laughs> cool things with their hair and makeup and and makes creative choices I get to express myself as someone who is hopefully relatable and and fun to watch on the internet but I also get to express myself in the form of songs and singing and I think there's so much so many different things you can do with music and so much nuance to it. And I just, I think it's so cool that I also think it's cool that there's, there's no end to it. Like if I, yes. if I decided like tomorrow, like I want to wake up and I, and I don't want to be a pop musician anymore and I want to write folk music, I can do that. Or if I wake up and I'm like, you know, I really like this rock song. Like maybe I can recreate <laughs> it and like I can write for other people and I can perform on so many different stages. And I mean, there's just so much I can do with music and, and I, it really gives, gives me the sense of comfort, but also excitement. It's, it's just the coolest thing. Are you going to become the very first person to win NBC's The Voice and go on to win uh, Dancing with the Stars? Hey, I mean, that's the dream. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, I got the dance background. I feel like I feel like I could do both. I mean, you have to stay tuned, but you never know. <laughs> please, please come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you, Eva. Thank you so much. I would love to come back, and it's been so nice talking to you. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? Thank you. You too. Have a great rest of your day. Same to you.